friends, this is Lionel Anderson here with you guys with a brand new YouTube bit shoot video. Today we're coming live on location here in Budapest. Let's uh, show the viewers what we're looking at here. This is just one of the many sites that we've been to. I'll show you some more footage at the end of this video of other places in Budapest, so stick around for that. But yeah, I just I wanted to make a video uh, just because I felt inspired to do it. Uh, Pretty much it's going to be a Palladian message, okay? We haven't done a Palladian message in a long time. And I really got some downloads of information to reveal to you guys when it comes to this whole Ascension event, okay? There's a lot of disinformation on all these kind of things out there. A lot of people just don't understand what's really going to happen when this splitting of the worlds happens. And uh, these people go through the Ascension or the Christian community. They call it the rapture or whatever. You know, there's all these different words. So what is actually going to be taking place? All right, so we're gonna get to that in today's video. So just gonna encourage you guys, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be bringing more videos from Europe to show you guys and also hit the like button, okay? So let's just get right into it. I wanted to start by showing you guys a video. Uh, that I came across these guys are remote channelers okay or remote viewers and uh, they have remote viewed some pretty interesting things in the past and they got a pretty high success rate of foretelling the future events that could take place a lot of the things that they said before have actually happened so for those of you who don't know what remote viewing is they can pretty much project their consciousness to view events in the future the past pretty much it's a it's a very unique ability a gift but it's legit the u.s government has even had programs using these people so it's nothing to uh laugh at like people who have this gift it's legit the government was even using it in their secret programs okay the central intelligence agency and the monroe institute have done a multitude of studies together on remote viewing yeah. Do you want to go into a little bit more about the Monroe Institute? I think it's the most premier research center for consciousness expansion. It's a place where, like you said, the history behind it was they sent the early re remote viewers for the CIA and other uh, military intelligence to that location to be able to utilize technology that assisted them in making better target viewings. Joe McMonagle, who's a teacher of the remote viewing program at Monroe Institute, and who has just a storied existence of successes in remote viewing for the military and special operations forces, they gave him the Legion of Merit regarding his ability to sit in his house in Virginia and tell you what's going on inside a Russian facility underground somewhere in the tundra of uh, Northern Russia. So. They remote viewed the Ascension event. And here's what one of these guys had to say. Take a look. What the, I'm sorry. What the hell is this target? <laughs> what the hell did we remote view? Yeah, no. I am so excited about today's target. Um, you guys were looking at the rapture, the global religious event of an unknown time. So this is uh, known by many names. Um, there's uh, the Christian, the Christian faith looks at it like the rapture. You hear psychics talking about it like the split or a timeline split. Um, if you read the law of one books and get into that, they call it harvest. Some people call it like global ascension event, things like that. So we were looking at, you know, this, what is the event that most closely aligns to these things? Let if you listen to Saratoga Ocean, um, she says that humanity is going through a split and it is... People that are going to naturally evolve as natural humans and then people that are going to merge with AI and technology. That is exactly what I got here. That yeah. is exactly what I wrote here. But what is the brain implant thing and how's it made, though, I wondered? A dual interface from behind the ear and one in the wrist, inside of the wrist. Something that would be called that's, the... That's the mark of the beast right there. Maybe that's it's the... Think. Maybe it's the 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 uh, technology of the Martian class. Yeah, the head so or the hand—that's what they say in the I think the Bible. Yeah. Here I saw a soldier of some kind uh, using a radio, you know, armed, and and the sense here is like the invisible enemy, 
requesting backup reinforcements. There's like a hidden war going on. Uh, needs help immediately, you know, gunshots, ricochet, casualties. And then we start going into the woo-woo here. Uh, so, you know, what I would say, and you know, a non-human type creature here, long head and skull, very skinny and frail, on a stretcher or gurney, either dead or gravely injured, uh, right away, I started seeing these beams, like kind of just like shooting vectors across the sky. And then taking a look closer look at the energy dynamic here. So um, this is constructed uh, a portal or a vortex and not naturally occurring, like not a black hole. Um, and it's also not as difficult or advanced as one might think. So it's something that I, I would think that technologically we could catch up to someday and make something like this. This was the event horizon, bright aperture, swirling, um, this heading out to the point of origin, definitely transdimensional. This, this doesn't feel like if you go through it, you end up in another galaxy. This like takes you outside of our known universe. Uh, moving very slowly from its point of origin and in our dimension, it's moving unimaginable, unimaginably fast. Then I started wondering, so who are they? And so they're bipedal, human-like, far more advanced. They were neither scary nor intimidating. They had a bluish gray um, tint. They had no hair. They were thin, but they were strong. Like they had a, a, like a, a physique. Not had they did not resemble what we would consider tall or short gray aliens. They looked more like us. It's slightly bigger eye sockets, um, but they had like a twinkle of like knowing and benevolence in their eye. But again, these weren't these were not malevolent in any way. Um, one said directly to me, they like the way I'm using my mind, but th these were like more than happy to engage and, and hang out. Um, they want, they wanted, it felt like they wanted to see evolution and, and like repeatedly the way they evolved, and, but it's really rare and where, where they are, there is no time. So they're patient. They're not, in a hurry they're not watching the clock they're just simply observing and it's uh, i had a sense that they were our ancestors and i thought ancestors it's like being from the same place but separated by eons there you have it my friends so as you could see this whole narrative of aliens and otherworldly beings is very much involved in what's all happening here now remember uh, we are within a simulation, okay? Aliens aren't coming from other planets on Mars or whatever you want to believe. It's not like that. They are beings from outside the simulation, interdimensional beings. I'm going to make that very clear, okay? In a simulation, beings outside the simulation coming in. And all sorts of beings outside of this simulation, okay? we got different races, everything like that, okay? Reality is not what you think it is. So pretty much... I like to liken things to, it's pretty much like we're in a video game, alright my friends? And in this game, uh, the simulation, uh, if you beat the game, then you ascend and you get out of here. If you lose the ga game, you gotta restart and do it all over again. That is what we're, go we're going through right now, okay? Uh, everything that you see going on in the world, pretty much the game's coming to an end. And at the end of the game, people are either going to lose the game and be recycled and have to start again at the beginning of the video game, okay? That's why the reality works in cycles, okay? Or you beat the game. And how do you beat the game? You, you learned all the tricks. You, you learned all the hacks and everything. You raised your vibration and you stopped giving the dark beings what they needed to keep this game going. That's loose. That's your low vibrational energy. And it does appear that when all these things happen and the Nibiru event comes in, which again, Nibiru is an interdimensional object and things start getting rebooted, there's going to there's gonna be a portal opening up from these otherworldly beings who are the good guys, you could say. 
And as you can see in that video that I showed you, that guy is talking about uh, some kind of technology taking people out of here. Now, it's not gonna happen the way you think it's gonna happen. It's not like you're gonna fly up with your physical body. It's not like that. Remember, you're in a simulation. This physical body that you're in, this physical body is an AI program, part of this matrix. So no, you're not gonna just fly out like how the Christians think, oh, all of a sudden you're gonna get sucked up and your body's gonna fly. No, no, no. This body's gonna get left behind, my friends. So you might be asking, does that mean you die? It doesn't mean that at all. It's not gonna be a traditional death experience. So it does appear that these beings are gonna be opening up some kind of portals using some kind of technology, but it's also a spiritual thing as well. And pretty much your spirit, okay? Who you truly are is going to leave this body. And I'm gonna tell you something that was very interesting. I think I've told this story once before, but this is for all the new viewers. But I had a prophetic dream once, okay? And in the dream, I was looking up into the sky and I saw what looked like to be two moons. It looked like the moon and some other object, okay? And I said, oh, it's Nibiru or whatever, what is this? And then all of a sudden, I get sucked up, okay? Like I start flying in the air and I'm getting pulled up. So this was this ascension rapture event. And I'm flying up, oh geez. Then I wake up, I actually wake up over the dream, except for I'm outside of my body it was an out-of-body experience, and I was literally looking down at myself on the bed, sleeping, looking at this physical body, okay? And I was outside my body. It was one of the coolest experiences ever. It's an out-of-body experience. It's very real. Astral travel, all of that. But that dream was to show me that when this happens, this physical body isn't coming with us. Who you truly are is the one who's going to be exiting the simulation. Okay, and another cool thing is about a month after that, I have this uh, editing program or uh, uh, software uh, for YouTube, and this AI program will generate titles for videos just as an idea. Uh, let's walk over here, they're playing music. Anyways, it generated a video title randomly talking about the Rapture Nibiru event on the exact same day I had the dream. Take a look. That's right, my friends. That title popped up and that date that was on there was the night of that dream. And this was like a month after I had that dream. And randomly that just pops up, confirming it was the rapture, uh, Ascension Nibiru event or whatever it said there. So What the heck right? That was another wild uh, Synchronicity showing me exactly what's going to be happening here. All right, so What's gonna happen? Well, as I said, you're going to leave the body Whenever this happens and this is for the people who have put in the work who've raised their energy and done uh, who've raised their Kundalini done all those things Okay, healed themselves, moved out of fear, and have a mission to humanity to help others. The people who have done that, the 144,000, which there's millions of us, we've activated the 144,000 uh, DNA strands, the chakras, it's all related. We're gonna leave the body, and I channeled this all, and you're gonna be transformed. Now, I don't, I'm not, some people will go to different, uh, different simulations you could say uh, in different dimensions some people might go to the fifth dimension a fifth dimensional reality that's outside of the demiurges uh, matrix okay others like the star seats and I'm sorry there's a lot of noise here this is just one of the consequences for uh, doing the videos it's noisy here so my apologies my friends so yes some people might go to this new 5d earth-like reality that's outside the demiurges uh, matrix you could even say it's the old earth because remember this is a simulation there's an original 5d earth so people say oh new earth you might just be going back to the old earth okay the original 5d reality that was created but the star seats and the people who came here on a volunteer mission so whether you're Palladian star seed or Arcturian whatever you want to call yourself you're probably just gonna go back to where you came from as well but the main theme of the story is for the people 5D Earth Grid and whatever.
whatever, you're gonna be transformed. These bodies, it's it's not gonna be this 3D body, but it's gonna be like the new and improved. So you're gonna be transformed into a light body. You're probably gonna be a giant, be a lot taller than you are now. Yeah, and I know it sounds all crazy, ridiculous, like it's some fantasy stories, mythologies, but my friends, reality's not what it seems. And uh, we gotta open our perceptions to the fact that these things could happen because I'm telling you, I've had enough strange experiences and enough synchronicities and enough contact to see that this stuff is indeed happening and people are going through these shifts already, the ascension symptoms, we're changing. We're going into higher dimensions as we speak and you can see what's going on that this realm has come to a close. All right, so that's it for today's video. I just want to do a little walk with you guys, show you some of the stuff that we're seeing here, all right? But yeah, like I said, if you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. I'll show you around Budapest, show all the footage that we've been looking at. and of course I will send you uh, free exclusive patreon videos but your support means the world and it helps me to be able to do this traveling to show you guys these places you know so, uh, your support helps me bring this knowledge to you over here we have the horse the horseman as you can see so I'm not sure if this is supposed to be Horsemen of the apocalypse and stuff. I'm not sure if that's what we're looking at. That could be Apollo or it might be Hermes. I'm not quite sure. But one thing is for sure is over here. It does look like we have Saturn, the Greek or the Roman god Saturn. He's always known to have a sky. The Greek Reaper is actually Saturn. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. Come with me. So yes, the Roman god Saturn always have a spike. The Reaper is dead, right? And uh, yeah, now I'll show you a few few other things that we've seen on our Budapest yeah. journey, and uh, that's about it, my friends. So thanks for watching. Like I said, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the rest of the video. Looks like he's killing a dragon or something, my friends. Reptilian lizard. Look at that. Just look at it. Knock him right out. He's knocking him right out. That's what we gotta do to defeat these dirty lizards. We just gotta knock him right out. So here we are, we're on top of this mountain that overlooks the river here in Budapest and you got this guy here, with the cross, holding it, and this guy sitting down, looks like he's worshiping him almost, but I uh, just wanted to make a point, you know, I find it funny how some people do not think that the NWO is behind the Christian religion, well, and it's clear, you know, this is overlooking the city, everybody could see it, and they got their little cross there. And you can really tell, they forced this religion on people hundreds of years ago, my friends. It was, it was forced upon people. It was the NWO religion of the day. And yes, people want to say, oh, but Christianity's under attack, this and that. Well, never forget, my friends, they always, always destroy the religions they created. Doesn't matter if it's Greece, Egypt, Sumerian. All those empires fell that they were behind. No different. There's no way that this was not part of the NWO agenda. And they got massive monuments overlooking these cities, shoving their cross right in your face. So, very obvious. People got to wake up. No offense to anyone, but if you don't think the NWO was behind that, you haven't seen the world. You haven't seen the programming. Because that's what this is program they weren't allowed to be there if it was against the agenda never forget and there you have Hermes 
And I wouldn't be surprised if that was Apollo, I'm not sure. Is that a eagle in the middle? Eagle slash phoenix. Interesting. You're gonna always see these mythological characters, my friends, everywhere you go in Europe at all these buildings. It's imprinted into our society and all these European societies. It's right in our face. You find a lot of truth that they tell you in these sculptures, buildings, always implanting the truth, occultic themes. It's up to you to figure it out, to figure out the game, yeah? You gotta figure out the game that we're in. Figure out the characters. That's what they are, they're characters in the game. You wanna beat the game, you gotta know thy enemy, you gotta know thyself. Pick up the Easter eggs, the clues that are embedded in our reality. It's all out there in the open, my friends. You want to ascend, you must beat the game. Now I shall take you guys inside St. Stephen's Basilica. Now I don't know Latin or whatever language that is, but interesting, ego. Wouldn't be surprised if they're talking about the Demiurge. But I could be wrong. Let's go take a look anyways. Alright, we're here in St. Stephen's Basilica. Right off the bat, you can see the floor is the checkerboard, black and white, classic Masonic, representing the struggle between good and evil. Lays within us all. Very beautiful cathedral though. Basilica, I should say. There we have God, aka Saturn, Father Time. It's always depicted with a white beard. Santa Claus, Kronos, always a white beard. And of course, Yahweh. All the same being, my friends. Anunnaki. Of course, we got the halo, the sun of God, right? The sun. A lot of oyster shells. I don't know the symbol, but symbolism behind that, but I'm gonna have to research it after today. Got the stars, lots of stars here. We are all stars, right, my friends? There's another sun there. It's kind of hard to tell on here, but that is the sun up there. Another halo around the head, symbolizing the sun, what it's actually all about. This is the main little area here. Again, another halo around the head, symbolizing the sun. It's all sun worship. And of course, you got the dove. The dove represents the spirit, the soul. Got the Ark of the Covenant, my friends. 
That's right, the Ark of the Covenant. And of course we got more stars. Always find a lot of astrology. More stars. And that's it my friends. Thanks for watching. Now that is a Tartarian building right there, my friends. Absolutely incredible. Even as those Tartarian flowers that you always see on these buildings, which means it was a frequency generating machine. They gen it's built on ley lines and they generate these frequencies. Here's the front of the building there, friends. It's unreal, absolutely unreal. You guys gotta come to Budapest, I'm telling you. If there's a place you wanna go, do not forget about Budapest. Cause it's underrated, I'm telling you that right now. A lot of people, when they think about going to places, they never think about going to Budapest. Come to Budapest, I'm telling you. One of the coolest places we've been. Communism coming to North America now, unfortunately, unless we put a stop to it. Okay friends, Lionel here with you guys. I'm going to go put the ice back. This is water, it's ice cold. Let's see how long I can tough it out for. Steam room to cool off. Or to warm up, I should say. 